So this is our puppy pack that I'm going to go over. This is typically what I do when people come pick up their puppies. They come in, we go over all this, I answer any extra questions. We talk about um, what the next couple weeks and months is going to look like with their pup. But I'm going to do that here through a video. Because of COVID-19, we're doing things a little bit differently. And you can get back to me with any questions that you have. I'm hoping that I can cover them all in this video for the most part. But every pup will have a folder like this. Um, most important two things are going to be these two things right here. This is going to be a shot record from our vet. Um, that'll have their information right here on it. This little barcode is just their microchip. It matches this over here. It's their microchip code. Um, inside here, this will show that they had their first booster shot. It says how many weeks they were, what the date was, and then they usually write the weight right here. Um, your puppy will need two more of these shots. You usually want to do them every three to four weeks. You don't wanna go longer than four weeks, and you don't wanna go sooner than three weeks getting their shots. So you'll look at this date and you can talk to your vet about scheduling it three weeks from that date to four weeks. Um, this is a way previous puppy, so don't bother with this date. But um, that way you can schedule your shots out. I get the puppy's shots as close to pickup as possible. So Oakley and Cinder's litter um, are getting their shots. Um, let's think. They're going home on the third. They're getting their shots, I think, on the first on that Wednesday. Of July. Um, so anyway, the other thing that's important that you're about to want to see, um, I'll write back here their worming regimen and all the dates they were wormed and what they were wormed with. That will tell your vet everything that your puppy comes up to date with so they know how to proceed forward with their next shots. They need two more of those booster shots, these, and then 16 weeks or later they can get their rabies. After that they're done for the year. You don't have to do anything else from there. You'll want to start them on heartworm right away. Um, we do, at least here, we have lots of mosquitoes. So our puppies um, and all of our adults are on heartworm monthly. Um, okay, so this is the microchip form. Um, this code right here, like I said before, this is the microchip code. If your vet reads your pups, it'll be um, around their shoulder blades. That's about where they'll find it. This is the code to your pup. These are just extra code stickers that you get. My vet has one on his records. Um, if you wanna put one, one, give one to your vet that they can put in their records, you can do that. Otherwise, they're just for you to have for the number. Um, this, you can either mail it in or you can do it online. Um, it's like a dollar or two cheaper to do online. It's 20 bucks. It's a one-time fee to enroll with um, the AKC Reunite. That way, if your puppy ever gets out for whatever reason, if someone steals them, they are taken to the pound, someone finds them, takes them to a vet, they always read the chip. They always check for a chip in any of these situations. So your, your name, your number, and all of your address and everything is linked to this chip. I tell everyone, this is one of the most important things. Please do enroll your puppy in this. I know everybody takes great care of their dogs. No one plans on losing them but it's the one time that it was after a bath, they didn't have their collar or something that they get out. And it's just better safe than sorry. To have their microchip, you will get them back. So that's that. Um, the other thing that's in here, um, uh, this is just my receipt that I'll have you guys sign um, for my records. And let's go to the next thing here. So all of this is obviously written down talks about the vaccinations. It talks about the, the purpose behind the spacing between them. Um, you'll have the dates in, in the, their little shot record here. So you'll be able to talk to your vet about that and they'll schedule out the next shots for you. Um, I talk about heartworm. Um, you'll wanna get them started on heartworm. Spaying and neutering, you typically wanna do that around six months um, or later. I don't particularly like doing it any younger than that. But for your boys, I will tell you, you, they will start marking. That doesn't mean that they will mark your house, but they will start lifting their leg to mark outside. I've heard of people that tried to keep their dogs intact for one to two years. With some males, if you leave them intact, it is a, is a chance that they may start marking in the house. And once they start that, it's, it's really hard to stop that. 
So I recommend really getting them spayed and neutered around six months. You don't have to worry about your girls going into heat and you don't have to worry about your dog, your boys picking up bad habits. Um, next thing is teeth. Don't freak out if you find a puppy tooth lying around the house. They are going to lose all their puppy teeth. They're sharp. They are going to go through a phase of wanting to chew and gnaw and nibble on your fingers. Um, and they're sharp. So I tell everybody, do not play with your puppies with your fingers like this. And I know it's cute when they try to nibble on them, but they will cut you up with those little teeth. I work really hard with um, mine on teaching them. If they start getting really mouthy with my hands when we're playing, I either start playing with a toy or a rope, or they get put kind of in timeout in their crate if they're getting really nippy on my hands. I'm just really firm with that you don't want an adult dog that's still nippy and likes to chew on people's hands. So you be conscious of that. <laughs> um, they should lose all their teeth between eight months to a year at max. Um, for any reason, I've only had one dog that ever held onto their baby teeth. When you get them neutered or spayed um, around that six months to a year mark, my vet just pulls out any puppy teeth that are left in there. He typically doesn't have any, but he goes ahead and just pulls them out while they're out on the table if they have any. So you can talk to your vet about that for some reason if your puppy has retained any of those teeth. Um, grooming, you, I usually get groomed mine every six to eight weeks. I have some people that get their dogs groomed every two to three weeks because they like them looking clean. I have some that let them grow out for months and months because they like the really fluffy shaggy look. Um, back here towards the back, I have a grooming chart that's, um, if you wanna take this to your groomer, if you don't have one, this is something you could show them. Not all groomers are created equal. I do have some references for different areas that um, I can send you for groomers that people have referenced to me, but this is essentially what the dog is supposed to look like. Some groomers just don't get it, but all of your schnauzers can look like this if you got a good groomer. So. Not, not all groomers are created equal. I feel like sometimes the hardest time thing of owning a schnauzer is finding a groomer that grooms them the way you like. Um, so next is the food. Your puppy is eating only natural pet max meats, lamb and cod. If you type in max meats, lamb and cod, you'll, f you'll find it. It is a really high quality dog food. I sent you guys lots of information about that. Um, for every reason you see the link, your puppy pack will have a little Ziploc baggie that has some in it, but this is what it looks like. Um, if you open it, okay, it comes with a cup in it. Your pup, this back back here will tell you for their weight, how many scoops they should be getting. Right now, while they're a puppy, they get, they get extra. Right now, I feed the pups. They have constant food all the time, so they're nice and fat. Um, but it says feeding puppies and pregnant nursing dogs, you should double the amount indicated. So um, up to 10 pounds, you're supposed to be feeding one scoop a day. They're getting at least two. So you can give them a scoop in the morning, a scoop in the evening. Um, and then once they hit like a year, you can go, they should be between 11 and 20 pounds and you can start doing two scoops. Anyone that makes it over 21, you can do two and a half. Um, and that's, that's the total amount they should be getting all day. This is a fantastic, very natural dog food. I highly recommend keeping your dogs on this if at all possible. Um, I also like the From, the From and Eagle Pack brands. I believe I sent the links out on those. Um, those are kibble if you're looking for a little bit cheaper. Um, but this is what I feed my adults. This is 50-50 with Eagle Pack. That's what they eat. Um, and then my puppies eat just this. And I have some of my dogs, they even hear this bag with me making noise and they come running because they think that they're getting, they're getting like a treat for dinner and breakfast every day. So they absolutely love this stuff. They'll eat all of it and then they'll kind of just stare at me before they finally move on to their kibble. They do love it. And it's got, it's got so much great stuff in it. I notice a huge difference in the muscle and the build on my dogs, especially their coats. The It's got that fish in there. So when I feed my dogs this, I don't give them the fish oil pills. I know on my website, I talked about that, feeding them sardines or fish oil pills. If you're feeding them this, you don't need to do that because it has straight cod in it. So they're getting a lot of those omega fatty acids that are really great for them. Um, but if you're feeding them, um, one of the kibbles, then I highly suggest feeding them fish oil pills or the sardines because it's so great for their skin and their hair. Um, there's also a picture of it in here too. 
and I'll go over the exercises for the puppy with one of the pups in a second. Okay, I'm talking about the, the chewing. Um, I talked a little bit about that before. Pup, our schnauzers, I have found, they're not like bulldogs. We're like destroying your furniture unless you absolutely just do no discipline with your dog. I've never had a schnauzer that just destroys stuff for no reason. Um, if I'm obviously giving them some boundaries and rules, they pick it up really fast. I There's a handful of toys that I put in here. I know you guys probably already have baskets full of toys that you bought for your dogs. That's all really great. I suggest leaving those toys scattered around on the floor in a particular area where you're, you know that your pups are allowed to be. That way, anytime they see it, they're gonna wanna grab it and chew on it. It's just what they wanna do. Um, by having it out in the open, you'll find after two weeks, anytime you catch them, even nibbling on a baseboard, a shoe, a rug, the carpet, even nibbling on it, very stern voice, get on them. You can flick their back in if you need, whatever. Just kind of snap them out of it and tell them no. Anything that belongs to you, they do not chew on it and immediately pull out one of their toys and be like, let's go play fetch and give them one of their toys. I find usually within two weeks that I'll run up on them and they're chewing on something and I'm like, no, 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 what, what are you chewing on? And they have one of their bones. They have one of their toys. They learn real fast. What smells like them is theirs. What smells like you is yours. So if you're really diligent about setting your boundaries, they are smart dogs and they pick up on that fast. Um, I also, I even sometimes I'll throw a handful of toys down there and I'll throw like one or two of my shoes and I'll just stand and wait. If they go over and sniff my shoe, that's fine. If they even think about nibbling on it, really stern no, redirect them to one of their toys. I do this with some of my pups and you'll find real fast, I can throw my stuff out there in the middle and they leave it alone and they play with only their toys because they can smell what's theirs and what's not once they've been chewing on stuff. So if they destroy one of your shoes, don't let them just have the shoe. I've had someone that did that. That's, that's not a good thing. You're teaching them that anything is on limits for them and they can have all of it. So just pay attention and set rules and boundaries for them and they thrive in that. Um, that goes right into house training. They thrive on routine. So if you have a set routine with them, you stick with that. Even when they seem like they are house broke at so many months, six months, stick with it. I usually, my really good dogs have free reign of the house when they reach a year. Sometimes it's two. It just depends on how puppy they are. But I usually find within the first month or so, like they get it down really well. All the puppies are litter box trained. So I'll show you. Each of them has a little toy in here. They have a blanket that's gonna smell like their siblings and home. Um, there's a tug rope in there. Each one of them has three puppy bones. Um, a little ball that they can pick up in their mouth right now that's size appropriate. I have the bully sticks. I may take them time to be able to really work on those, but it'll keep them busy. And a comb, got a comb in each one of these. Um, they're all layer box trained. All puppies are layer box trained like cats. Some are better than others. None of the puppies are going to be like superb like cats. If you just put a litter box in your house, they're not going to wander the whole house and come back to the litter box. Um, right now, they have a pinned area. One area has their litter box. They know to use that. One has their food and one area is to play. Um, so right now, this smell is their green light. If you use this as a training aid, you can sprinkle some of this in your yard. And for the first week or two in the morning, um, if they're in a crate or whatnot, pick them right up when you let them out of the crate because sometimes they're holding it. They'll hop right out of that crate and pee right there on the floor. So pick them right up and you go put them outside right on top of where you've sprinkled this. This is just newspaper, by the way, so it just breaks right down with water. Um, and it, it'll it start teaching them this is the new place to go to the bathroom. It's outside, this smell computes with what they're, they've already learned. Um, I've heard really great things about our dogs and, and potty training pretty fast. Um, for those that, if you wanna have a safe area in your house, then set up a puppy pen. I sent the link with all the stuff. Um, you can put a litter box in a, in a, in a pinned area. Sometimes their front paws make it in and then they squat and pee in front of the box. They're, they're trying, they're not perfect. But, but So you might put like a pee pad or a towel down in front of it just in case. Um, but for the most part, the routine's there. So if you start with the routine and stick with it, they, they thrive. I typically crate train my pups and I put the divider about halfway. You want, and you can put a bed in there. You want them to be able to turn around and lay down. They don't need to be able to walk back and forth. Um, we're, the whole point of that is to play on their natural instincts. They don't want to soil where they sleep. 
So I would tell, I tell everybody, try the first night or two, give them five or six hours in the crate, feed them a good three to four hours before, take them to go out to go to the bathroom a ton, then put them in the crate for the night and set an alarm for five to six hours and take them out to go to the bathroom. If they do a few nights with no accidents, push it one more hour, seven hours the next night. A few more nights with no accidents, push it to eight hours. I have some pups at eight weeks that are grand. They do eight hours in the in the crate, no issue. I have some others that it takes them a couple more weeks just because they are small, so their bladders aren't quite as big. The worst thing you can do is give them water or food within a couple hours to bedtime because it's still going to be in their system and it, you can't blame them if they go in their crate because they just can't hold it that long. Um, so I have some people that put a little tub in their crate that has the litter in it and they put the bed on the other half. That works too for the night. Um, during the day, you don't need to keep that in there. Part of crate training is helping them learn to hold it. So they're learning to hold it for a few hours at a time before going out. I recommend to everybody to have a safe area, whether that's the laundry room or a crate during the day. If you cannot keep your eyes on your puppy, you are not holding them, put them in their crate. There's so many toys you can throw in there. They're like newborns. They're going to sleep for a good portion of the day and they will be just fine chewing on stuff in there. Um, it keeps them out of trouble. Um, if they're having lots of accidents around the house because you don't see them, it is going to significantly throw a wrench into the potty training for them. The more accidents they have inside, the less they're learning. So if you put them in the crate to keep them from having accidents and chewing on things, you're going to find that you, they, they thrive on their routine because they're not messing up when you're not watching them. Um, plus it's safer than them. They get a hold of cords. They get into things you don't want them to. So if you got to cook dinner or run an errand, don't be afraid to put them in their crate. Um, but so these are all the things. I also put some pee pads in the bottom of these. When you pick your puppy up for those that are flying on airplanes or driving home, if you were holding the puppy in your lap, I strongly suggest you put one of these on your lap just on the chance they decide to have an accident while you're holding them. I have had that happen. It is not that fun. So use a pee pad on the drive home or the flight home. Um, you can also pull one of these out if you're doing a litter box or whatnot at the house and you can kind of put this in the front of the lip. So if anyone has an accident in front of the litter box, there's a pee pad there to catch it. Um, just to give you an idea how I do my crate training with the with going to the bathroom outside, my routine is typically they wake up in the morning, I take them outside to go to the bathroom. I usually set a 10 to 15 minute timer. 10 minutes is pretty good and let them go to the bathroom. Just because they pee and poop once does not mean they are done. Sometimes they go multiple times. Um, so if you just set a 10 minute timer, sit down on a chair or watch them through the window, let them do their, their, do their duty. Um, you can give them lots of praise when they're going if you want. Um, regardless, if you keep this routine up, they will just learn that that's where they need to go whether you're praising them or not. Um, but I usually set a 10 minute timer so they have sufficient time to go multiple times if they need to. Then I bring them in. After I have seen them go to the bathroom, we do 30, to, 30 minutes to an hour of play time, cuddling, loving on them, all that kind of stuff. When that's done, I go ahead and feed them. After eating, almost always within like five minutes, they're going to go to the bathroom. The older they get, the longer that they'll start holding it. But as of right now, I can stand there and they leave the food bowl to go to the bathroom usually with in seconds to minutes. So either feed them in their crate when they're done eating, give it a minute or two, take them back outside, give them a good 10, 15 minutes wandering the yard so that they can go to the bathroom. Um, after you bring them back in, another 30 minutes plus of play. After they go to the bath, after they've eaten a full meal like that, they may need to go to the bathroom every like 30 to 45 minutes because they're processing all that food. So sometimes it comes out in, in sets. It may not, they may not be able to go pee all at once and get all the water out or all, all the poop out. So after, after they've eaten breakfast, you may want to take them every 30 minutes for the next hour and a half or so. You're going to learn your puppy within the first week or two. Some are a couple hours. Some of them are like every 45 minutes, but you'll learn your puppy's routine. If you're on top of it within the first few days, you'll start getting it. Um, but that's kind of the routine that I do. So we go to the bathroom after I've seen them go to the bathroom, we do 30 minutes to an hour of play. And then I put them in their crate and I go get whatever done I need to get done.
They may sleep for an hour or two. I come, I get them out of the crate. I carry them outside, put them down. After I see them go to the bathroom, I bring them back in and we do another hour of play. Um, they may sit on my lap while I watch TV for another hour. I let one of my kids hold them or whatnot. But after it's been a while, I have them go back outside to go to the bathroom again. And then just remember, don't feed them dinner. Make sure that it's a good three to four hours before you're putting them in the crate for bed. Um, so that's for the house training. The health guarantee is back here and it's signed. Um, and all of them, all of them are signed. You guys will have to fill out your information in there. Um, mom and dad's pedigrees are in the back. I've written on all of them whose pedigree it is that's in here. If you would like to get your dog's registration and pedigree, when you spay or neuter them, send me the receipt for that from your vet and I will order their form and send it to you so that you can register them. You can name them whatever you want. I don't typically give these out unless people request because I used to do that and I get bugged by the AKC because nobody's registering their dogs. So I get some people totally want to, and that's great. Let me know after they've been spayed and neutered. I will get you the registration. For those of you who don't care, mom and dad's pedigrees are back here. Um, I tell everybody the pups typically are going to whine the first few nights, especially if you put them in a crate alone. They're not dying. I know that it's sad, but it's they just have to adjust to the new norm. It usually only takes them a couple days. Some pups don't have any issue and they don't make any noise at all. If you have another dog, they're going to attach to that dog very fast. Don't be surprised if they try to nurse off of your dog. It's it's fine if your dog snaps at them to kind of put them in their place or whatnot. They are just, they're figuring out the pecking order. That's not an aggressive behavior if they snap at them because they're doing things they don't want them to do. That's just them teaching the rules. Their own mother snap at them, so don't don't worry about that. Um, this smells like the siblings, so I, I let them all play with it and I rub everybody's mouths and bodies all over these. So this smells like home if you wanna put this in their crate with them at night. Worst case scenario, if you've got a real howler, every once in a while we have some that just howl, howl, howl. If you put them in a closet where it's nice and quiet, um, you can put a blanket over their crate too. I had one of my females when I got her as a pup, she was like that. And when I put her in our closet where it was nice and dark and quiet and I put the blanket over her, she was totally quiet and she slept through the night fine. Um, so if you have a different form, you're wanting them to sleep on the bed, that is totally fine. Just know they may have accidents on your bed in the night. I do the crate training. I just kind of do the cried out method for the first couple nights. Most of the puppies do totally fine. There's maybe 10 minutes of a little whining here and there. Once it's quiet, they go to bed. I will tell you that if you put their crate in your bedroom with you, if they are gonna be whiny, they may be whiny because they can hear you, so they want out of the crate. And if you get up and let them out because you feel bad for them, they will start training you and they will realize that when they whine, they get out of their crate, they get attention. So just be aware of that when you're, when you're crate training them. Um, but this can be a good um, aid for them at night. They're just adjusting to the new norm. I know that it can sound really sad, but they're used to sleeping in a giant pile of puppies. So they've got to figure out that you're the new pack now and that this is their new den. And usually within a night or few, they adjust really fast. They get really excited about all their toys and usually all the toys end up in the crate and they're just fine after by the end of the week, they know crate is sleep time and all the fun time with their toys and they adjust really fast. Um, some other bad habits that people have talked to me about